You think all stakeholders can be satisfied uh, by a company just focusing on satisfying its consumers and its employees rather than, than maybe uh, delving into ESG. It's kind of the anti-ESG you're launching, is it not? Well, I, I find it difficult to be anti-ESG when I, when I find it very difficult to even define what ESG means today. But here's actually what we do stand for is a message to corporate America to focus on excellence over politics. If you're an oil company, be an excellent oil company. If you're a coal company, be an excellent coal company. And if you're a solar company, be an excellent solar company. But we're not going to tell, for example, oil companies not to be oil companies. And, and Joe, this relates to, I think, a, what I call a fiduciary issue with the top asset managers in the world. And what I think is happening today is a problem where the biggest asset managers on the planet, BlackRock, State Street, Vanguard, I think they're using their clients' capital to advocate for viewpoints in the boardrooms of corporate America that most of their own clients disagree with. That's a sort of fiduciary breach. And there is so much capital concentrated in the hands of just those three firms, 20 trillion, more than the GDP of the United States, that the real problem is when that much capital is concentrated in one set of hands or in a few hands that are advocating for one ideology, we lack the true diversity of thought that the American economy depends on and that our capital markets depend on. So that's what we're hoping to fix at Strive. What, Vivek, and I, I did a little uh, a look at ESG and performance. Would you say that the, the just in terms of, of not looking at it in terms of value or value judgment or ideology, it, it, it doesn't outperform. I mean, you can feel good. I get, theoretically, I guess you can feel good about it. But it is, are there studies that are in where the, we can just close the door and say, absolutely, ESG does not work any better than anything else and maybe works worse? Do you know? Yeah, well, look, I think there is, it's clear that there's no evidence that ESG outperforms. Despite the claims made by some of the world's largest asset managers and their CEOs, there's no evidence to support that fact. Of course, people on both sides of this debate are going to cherry pick data to support their own views. But our perspective at Strive and my personal perspective is that many of the underlying companies are actually performing more poorly because of what these large shareholders, and I use shareholders in quotes because it's not really their money, it's the money of their clients, but what these large asset managers are telling these companies to do. Exxon actually suffered a, a proxy battle that caused it to reduce its oil production. I think Exxon would be a more successful company today if it were actually drilling for more oil than it was before BlackRock and Engine Number no. 1 told Exxon to go in a different direction. And I think that there were bad externalities for the American economy, for our reliance on Russian oil. There are geopolitical consequences that cause consumers to pay higher prices at the pump. And part of what we're exposing is the fact that it's the money of everyday American citizens that's being used to advance this ideology that most of them actually disapprove of. And that's a disconnect that we have to address. And one way to look at it, Joe, is if you got the CEOs of Exxon, Shell, Chevron, and ConocoPhillips in a room, say, and they coordinated to say we're going to reduce gas production and gas prices spike as a result, that'd be the stuff of movies. There'd be handcuffs. People would be locked up on antitrust violations. Yet today, when the largest owners of those firms effectively direct them and mandate them to do the same thing, somehow that gets celebrated as ESG instead. That's a problem, but we think the right solution is competition. That's what we're bringing to the table. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.